Hi, Richard Knowles from Element Finance here. I hope everybody's well. If you're watching this video um, or reading uh, reading this on a blog, uh, hopefully you will have seen the last two videos. We're talking about the six pillars for property development that we're, we're running through. Um, we're going to talk about pillar two today, but I'm just quickly, very quickly going to recap what the six pillars are. Um, so we're looking at pillar number one is identifying an opportunity. Pillar number two, is, uh, which we're going to talk about in, in more detail shortly, is around the site appraisal. Pillar number three is uh, purchasing uh, the particular opportunity and planning, the two Bs. Um, pillar number four, our favourite topic, finance. Um, so how do you finance the site and what options are available to you there. Five is construction, so how are you going to build it out. Uh, and six is the exit the all important exit. So they're the six areas that we're going to discuss. Um, I know there could be you know, more steps than that. We've broken it down to be fairly simple. These, as we see it, are the six sort of key areas, if you like, uh, to focus on. So without any further ado, uh, number two, site appraisal. So it's broken down into two areas, really. We're going to talk about the viability of the site and then a, a high level financial assessment of the site, which will give you an overall appraisal of whether this is a good opportunity for you or not. So you found your site. If you are a, um, a slightly inexperienced developer or a first time developer, this is at the point where I would urge you not to get too carried away. You found a site that you're obviously quite ex excited about. You think it's going to be a great project. This is the time to have a very cool head and look at things from a, a sort of, you know, an analytical point of view and not get emotionally swept away. You need to make these decisions based on, on fact rather than how you feel about something. So. That's the one thing I would say at this stage. And that's really what the appraisal is all about. So um, we're going to look at it in two parts. So viability and then uh, the high level uh, financial assessment. So viability first. We're actually looking for things that are just going to kill your project outright. So things that are out and out showstoppers. So uh, you want to look at the access. You know, if you don't have access to a site, you've got no right of way over it. How are you going to get on there? It, it's it's walk away time. It's going to kill it. So access is is really important. That you, you check out what you've got and what you don't have. Uh, flood risk, another area. Um, so you want to see what flood risk zone you're in. There's zones one to three. Zone one is the least likely to flood. Zone three is more likely to flood. Um, again, not saying that you can't do a project in zone three, but it's worth being aware of because there's probably a whole heap more work that you need to do. So check out the, your, the, what, what area you're in for flood risk. Planning history. I personally uh, have a look at go along local authority portal, depending on where you are in the country. Uh, they've all got them. You can search and have a look at, you know, has it had any applications in the past? If so, what for? What was the outcome? It's just great information, really. Um, there may be some, some things that, that appear that uh, would be a bit of a warning sign for you. Um, and they may not. Um, but it's worth checking. Also, when I have a look at TPOs, which are tree preservation orders, does it have any? Um, two reasons, really. One, you can't you can't cut them down. You'll get fined uh, quite heavily for, for chopping a tree down. It's got a TPO on it, um, and they're quite difficult to, to to get moved. So, you know, if they're if you've got them on the site, it doesn't. It's not an out and out showstopper depending on where they are. Um, but it's, again, it's just something to be aware of. Um, also, the designation of the site. So does it sit in a, is it a green field? Is it brown field? Is it green belt? Is it in a conservation area? Again, need to be aware of these things because they will all influence what you can and can't do. So high level financial assessment. We're not going to go in deep because pillar number four is finance and we'll talk about it in, in much more detail there. But for here, it just needs to be very simple. We work backwards. Gross development value, uh, commonly referred to as, as the GDV. So in essence, what's the site going to be worth when you've done whatever you're doing to it? Doesn't matter whether it's a block of flats, houses, it really doesn't matter. It's just what is the end value of that? And we're not going to get into the nuances of the market and, you know, um, whether you should have contingency and all that, that's that's a more complex subject for another day. This is just very simply looking at the GDV and working backwards. So um, take some guidance on it. You can speak to local estate agents. Uh, you can uh, look at, up yourself at what similar properties have sold for in the area of a similar size, you know, maintaining a, you know, a common sense approach to it. You come up with a, an end value. You then need to net off all your costs. So obviously the biggest one is the build cost. 
if you are the main contractor, you are a builder, you'll have a good handle on what it's going to cost you to build out a particular property. If you're not, you need to go and, 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 and get a you know get a good steer from from someone that, that is an expert in the construction to give you either give you a quote or just to give you a you know give you a per square meter type price. Uh, the caveat here is is you know people do just apply square meter price. I think depends where you are and how experienced you are as to how accurate that is because it can vary so massively um, but for the purpose of this you can just say yes square meter is price as long as you've got some history to base it on previous projects or maybe friends projects that have given, given you that kind of information just for a bit of a rough and ready assessment um, you'll then need to crack down into a lot more detail uh, you don't need to net off any professional fees um, or any other payments so whether it's got a you know a section 106 or a, a seal community in infrastructure levy payment against it um, you'll need to find out what that is um, that can be a whole big chunk of money again not going to go into that here if you are interested there is a, a link click on the link there's a couple of articles uh, that I've, I've written around uh, seal and section 106 so You've then got the most important thing to, to, to knock off is your, your profit, essentially, you know, what you're looking to make out of this project. Um, I would recommend that you want to be looking at at least a sort of 20 to 25 percent margin. 20 is really a bit low. 25 gives you a little bit of wriggle room. Um, and there is a reason I say that, which will become apparent in, uh, in pillar number four. Uh, mainline lenders want to make sure that you've got, you know, it's a profitable project for margin erosion and, and, and so on. So very simplistically, once you've knocked all those off, Whatever you're left with is whatever you can afford to pay for the opportunity. Now, this may or may not agree with what the, the landowner or the vendor of, of said property, project, land, whatever it is you've, you've, you've found um, might not agree with that. If it does, great, you can go and pay that. Happy days, move on. Um, if not, then it gives you the opportunity to go back and just, you know, you can start negotiating. You can use it as a tool for negotiation. If you're miles out, then it's just it's not going to stack walk away. Um, that's a very rough and ready assessment. You can obviously then go in back into it in a lot more detail if the numbers are pretty close. But from a very high level point of view, it's a bit of a sniff test, really. Have a look, bum, 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 do those few things. Does it make sense or doesn't it? Um, if it's blown out of the water on a very, very brief thing like that and it's just way out of whack, then it's, it's just not viable. I'd walk away, you know. And the whole reason for us doing these series of videos really is that, you know, we do see projects. We see people approach us with projects and they just don't make any sense. Uh, financially don't make any sense. Um, so, you know, it's important. It's important part to, to do that. So I'm going to stop rambling on. So that's pillar number two. I look forward to seeing you again when we talk about pillar number three, which will be uh, purchase and planning. So hopefully see you again soon. I've been Richard Knowles. Thank you very much.